Hello everyone and welcome to another 3D video. It's been quite some time since I've done one of these and I think even longer with, since I've done one where I just walked around a place and rambled over in the background. If you guys don't really want to hear any of that then that's cool. Just go ahead and mute the video and put your own jams on in the background if you want to just enjoy some pretty sweet 3D visuals. As you can see there isn't as much volume in this video as normal and that's because I was using one of my newer setups which allows me to put the cameras as close together as I possibly can without using a beam splitter but it worked out pretty well all the same and of course this is Sully Historic Site which I did a 3D documentary on well not much of a documentary it was more of a few facts but a lot of that ended up being cut out there was like a several page script that a lot of it I just couldn't think of a visually interesting way to get the information across and so I just ended up cutting it out when doing the 3d documentaries it's more about the locations the interesting locales and things to see and what looks good in 3d and big open spaces and lots of trees and foliage and buildings look good. And these signs I'm making a highlight of are actually somewhat new signs. They were not there before when I was doing the 3D documentary. And also you may notice that the microphone, the audio quality sounds really nice. And that's because I'm using the mic on my brand new Galaxy S22. Uh, this has a really good mic. In fact, the mic on this phone sounds just as good, if not better, than this microphone that I was using at this stu uh, recording studio at this library. And the best thing about this is that I have the phone with me at all times and I don't have to set up an appointment at the library. If I need to do a voiceover, I can just quickly do it on this thing and especially for the comic dubs that I'm working on since a lot of the voice actors are people I work with I can easily set them down in one of the soundproof theaters and just have them read their lines into the mic it really does sound incredible we have a lot of foliage here I'm not I'm not really talking much about the video uh I'm doing a bit better things are going a little bit better recently and hopefully they continue to go a little bit better. I got some cool things on the horizon, hopefully. And I have someone, I've met someone who seems to be a bit interested in learning 3D and all that. So who better to teach them but me? Well, probably a lot of industry professionals, to be honest. But I also know a thing or two about making 3D content. Right here, we see the remnants of an old bridge. I'm not 100% sure. This might have actually been a train bridge or a little train bridge at one point. I think it was just a regular old uh, footbridge. But the stones are still there, basically all. And I think it got cut out, but if you look up to the top left, which, yeah, it's not in this video. Oh, wait, this real quick. Uh, so if you ever wanted to know that the pandemic is over, at least in the United States, we've just given up on it. Uh, they took the COVID-19 signs and turned them into other signs. Ooh, big 3D pop-out moments. I gotta have the pop-out moments. That's what we all come, that's what we crave. I saw this little vine hanging down and I was like, yeah, why not? And there's another moment later on. Uh, yeah, there's like literally big old warehouse buildings like right above that hill that I was talking about before. And this is inside one of the slave quarters. I really didn't get into these buildings when I did the other documentary. So we're doing it now. I don't really have much to say about it. These are just interesting 3D views since you have all those objects in there. There's a lot of things to look at. A lot of fun stuff for the 3D to have fun with. And the preview window's having a tough time with the video. It's been a while since I did a 3D video. And I also took a lot of 3D stuff of foliage. And there's some buildings and a plane in the background. So Sully Historic Site is actually on the land that Dulles Airport owns. However, the buildings are owned by the Fairfax Park Authority. 
but the grounds themselves are upkept by the airport since it's like all part of it. But if you go there on the right day, then you will see a lot of very low to the ground planes as they come into land. It was kind of overcast. That that day started off really bright and sunny, and then it got a little rainy, and then got overcast and chilly, and it's just been kind of a yucky spring so far. I think we had like a few days back in March where it was like 60 or 70 degrees, and it was absolutely beautiful outside, and we just haven't had that since, and it's just been icky. But it cleared up enough for me to go out there. It was at this weird midpoint where... It could have gone either way, but fortunately I didn't get rained on. And I got a really warm jacket too. Alright, big 3D money shot here also. This pump. A lot of this stuff you're seeing is original stuff, but also kind of refurbished since the owners the ownership of this of these buildings were passed down between through several several people. And it was mostly farm. It's always been a farm, actually, mostly farms. Well, it was a, more of a plantation, which I, I guess is just a really big farm. This is a kitchen here. They had external kitchens since you didn't want to light your house on fire. I'm just kidding. Uh, they just had an external kitchen to flex. And the other thing is that they wanted to have the enslaved in the house as little as possible. So they built all the working places outside away from the house. So they didn't really have to see all that and if you notice that walkway that door up on the porch goes directly into the dining room so the food would come directly from the kitchen straight to the dining room and then they would be uh they'd have to leave on the other side here is also more kitchen type stuff and this building does have a second floor that i haven't been up there yet but there is a second floor and i think it's more or less just used for storage one of these is a dairy. I think it might be the building we're about to come up with after this. What else is there to say? I've just been working. Uh, I got denied the rank of supervisor, which doesn't make any sense to me. But, well, it makes sense in the fact they might just not have the budget to hire more supervisors, even though we only have one supervisor to share between two different locations and... You know, there's each location is supposed to have two, so we're down three supervisors. Kind of sucks because I was really hoping to be able to start making a little bit more money, but as long as I keep up my hard work ethic now, I'll be able to continue to keep in that good cash flow. But gas has been wildly expensive. Oh, that building I just put the camera into is a smokehouse with all the meats in the ceiling. This is a refrigerator. This is what they used to look like. They were built into the ground. And believe me when I say, yeah, that place does actually stay pretty cold. I remember I did some stuff there over the summer. And it was really hot outside. But we walked in there. And I'm telling you guys, it it was cold, man. It felt like someone had the AC up. It was like 60 degrees inside a house or something. And that little area right there would actually be filled with water. That trench. This just seemed like a cool shot to me the window through the window and then i'm like oh let me let me line it up inside one of the squares that'll be cool and it kind of was these videos are also me kind of experimenting with different 3d shots or framing or you know cool what would look cool in 3d that's what all of this is always all about and there's the main house again this is a rock here I don't know if it was intentionally put here or if it just always was there, but it's a pretty cool seat. Works as a nice seat. It's a little bit slanted, but you can't really tell when you're sitting on it. Just figured I'd come and get a closer look for a very long time. Now that tent you see off in the background, I'm not really sure what that was. It's not normally there, but there was a, I think it was a balloon dinosaur, like hanging from the ceiling of it. I don't, I didn't know what that was about. I don't know if they found like dinosaur bones on Sully. As far as I'm aware, they, there are no dinosaur bones on Sully, but who knows? I think they're going to have an Easter thing up there as well. We have these lamp posts here. It's a nice lamp post. I think it was slightly on to the little wires, the coils inside the light, the light bulb seemed pretty 
lit. Well, they were like slightly orange, so I just assumed they were all in, but just very dim. This building is actually not part of the main site. This did not make it into the documentary. This is a school building that was relocated from another area of Fairfax and just placed there. And now it's just used as a building. Building. There's a lot of buildings here used as storage. Which makes sense because you don't really want to use the main house as a storage. Since it's like such a historical thing. And they also do tours in there. You don't want like a bunch of modern day stuff in there. We got a bush here. A nice bush. This is the back side of that dairy building or the refrigerator building i know there's an ac unit hooked up to it but i swear that is not the reason why it's cold i think that's part of the other side of it here's a little sign this is the gardens it has some cool plants here here's another cool 3d shot this podium not really a podium it's like a plaque on a brick podium thing coming up out of your face we got some nice flowers down here. I wanted to get a little bit of a close up and allow people to put their faces in the flowers. And it's not smell o vision, you can't smell them, but if you could, then I guess they would smell fine. I didn't, I didn't really smell the flowers, I didn't stick my face in there. Here's some wooden stuff, I guess, to keep these plants safe. They might be for vines. I'm not really sure what the point of this stuff was. And here is a sundial, and I saw the pointy thing, and I was like, oh, big 3D money shot? Not as big. I don't think it worked as well. It might be a bit too extreme, but that's all right. Yeah, as you can see, Sully Historic site is literally right next to a highway. And you really don't notice it unless you walk over here to the gardens. Like, if you're in the main Sully area, you wouldn't even know. Especially if it's on a slow day. And there's like no cars on the highway. Over here is also where Richard Bland Lee and his wife, whose name somehow escapes me. This is where they're buried. I didn't I didn't go do a video there because that's kind of macabre. And, uh, you know, if you ever go there, you know where they're at. They're right over there. That's a lumber house. You can't really see inside of it, but basically they would store wood there. Outside of that, you know, big area that the wood lines up against the side of the the house, that wall. And they actually do use that wood. It's not just for looks. They do use it. It's a lone tree out in the field. Just thought it was cool. So I got a video of it. Just hanging out. And that's the visitor center, which I didn't get a video of at the beginning because there was a bunch of people hanging around. There was children and I didn't want to seem weird filming a bunch of children. But that is... I almost got a job here at Sully. Uh, I know I did volunteer work, but I almost had a legit job, but I didn't go for it. And that brings us to the end of the video.